I love making wood signs and today I'm making a gift for a good friend. I will show you how I use the Mod Podge technique to transfer the wording onto the wood. Select a piece of wood, mine is approximately A4 in size which is a printer piece of paper. Yes I know, I'm being a little lazy, just because I'm doing just the one cut today I didn't get the wood bench out but be careful and if you need to cut it cut it nice and neatly and then we just need to sand it I'm creating my own sanding block with a piece of sandpaper and a small piece of wood and I'm just going to simply sand every bit of it until it's lovely and smooth just like this this helps the lettering adhere later on I love to use what I have or you can repurpose or reclaim some wood you really don't need anything special for this project and I am using just my household wall paint. Thin the paint down with some water like this and stir until smooth. Apply a thin layer to the bare wood on all sides. As it's nice and watered down it soaks into the wood really well. You can give it a second coat of paint if you wish. If you haven't done already, print out your lettering in reverse. It's really important that you do print it in reverse. I'm going to do the kindness separately later, so I've left this out. You can use my template if you wish, so I've put it in the description below. My paint is now fully dry and I've given it a really light sand to expose some of the wood grains and ensure the surface is once again nice and smooth. Next take a brush and the Mod Podge and do a nice thin layer on the front face of the wood. Be nice and even. Now add another thin layer onto the printed side of the paper, being fairly quick at this point but making sure we get all of it covered. Especially the lettering. Turn the paper over and apply to the wood. Smooth out any air bubbles, starting at the centre and working to the edges. You can use a ruler or something like this to help you, Let's just smooth it out, but just be gentle that you don't want to tear the paper. As it gets slightly damp it becomes more fragile and then once you've smoothed all the air bubbles we need to leave it to dry completely fully and it might take 24 hours to dry just make sure it's fully bone dry before we do the next step as the Mod Podge is a glue wash your brushes absolutely thoroughly with some warm soapy water and make sure you add the lid back onto your Mod Podge for your next project once the paper and the wood are completely dry, get yourself a clean bowl of water and a sponge. Squeeze the excess of the water out of the sponge and then start dampening the paper. Once you see the black of the font appearing, it's time to start rubbing the paper away. If you don't have a sponge, you can use a damp cloth in the same way. I find it works best with a circular motion and your finger. Keep dampening the paper as you go. But don't rub so hard so that you rub the lettering away. Do you see here where the paper is starting to be rubbed away and it's leaving the black lettering behind? And you can see the wood grain through as well. Some element of the white paper always tends to remain, so th this is why I tend to use the Mod Podge technique on painted wood. So I like to paint my wood first, as I did here, and it just gives that little bit of an aged effect, a farmhouse rustic look, and I really love it. So I don't mind that some of the little bits of paper are still left behind. If you do rub the lines off, just like here, I'll show you how we'll fix that later, so don't worry, just enjoy your project. Some of it we might need to fix, but we can do, so just keep going and enjoy it. Work your way over the whole piece and then you can let it dry again. 
once you've let it dry again you can see where you might need to remove a little bit more and then so you can repeat the process a little bit lightly for the next time just like this it's just a few little areas I can improve once you're happy set it aside and let it dry again and now it's dried out we can just take a light bit of sandpaper and just sand down those edges not sanding any other lettering at all. I want my kindness lettering to be in gold so I'm using the trace and paint method that I do for many more of my videos. So this is printed not in reverse and I'm just going to cut it down to size. Use a graphite stick or a pencil or even carbon paper to transfer the lettering like this. Tape it down with some masking tape and then just transfer with a pencil or a pen the wording through. You can make so many different signs with this method and I absolutely love it. Just like I really like the Mod Podge method and you can get a nice finer detail with the Mod Podge method without having to go over and paint it all. I'm using this gold marker pen and just simply filling in between the lines. It's got a really lovely sheen on it and it's going to look fantastic. I really hope this inspires you to have a go and make your own wood signs. I love making mine and I hope my friend enjoys this as a gift too. You can add in some extra details as well just like this. For any sections that have been rubbed away just a little bit too much, take a nice fine paintbrush and some thin down acrylic paint. So just take the same colour acrylic paint and add a little bit of water and paint the sections back in. Remove any of your pencil lines as we don't want those to show through and then to finish and seal we can either give a full coat of Mod Podge or we can use something like um, a spray lacquer, just use something of your choice whether it be shiny or matte. I really do love how this looks, it's a real favourite one, look at the sheen on there, it's absolutely beautiful with the gold so I do hope you have a go and come and see some more of my wood sign videos, some of my other creative videos too and give everything a go and fill your home with beautiful things that you make. If you've enjoyed please do consider subscribing and I hope to see you again here soon. Thank you for watching and bye for now.